2015, folks. It's the first Spill Tank Patreon podcast of the year. Uh, and I have a new patron, Tim Mormon, uh, an old friend of mine from the Comic Jams. Uh, thanks for joining the Spill Tank Patrons Club, Tim. And I uh, hope you all tell your friends about uh, the Patreon campaign and uh, share it on the social medias and uh, spread the word wide and far. So what follows is a bit of an experiment. I'm going to mash up the audio from my new podcast series, the Spilt Ink Podcast, with some video of work I've done over the past little while. I wasn't very productive over the holidays because it's the holidays, but I did get uh, some done. And uh, I've been making videos of the progress on these pages for Dracula, Son of the Dragon. And this time I'm going to run it in the background with audio from the podcast. So what you're seeing is art from page 28 of Dracula, Son of the Dragon, and you'll hear audio from episode five of this Built-In podcast. So I was at a, a nice little so a nice little gathering down the street from my house at another cartoonist's place. And it was funny because at one point we were talking about how when we're not at the drawing table, we, we are uh, around people who aren't artists, we're perfectly happy not to talk about comic art, making comic art, and that, and that she doesn't actually like talking about uh, shop top stuff and which i i can sympathize with but then i turned around and had a long conversation with another cartoonist about <laughs> shout talk stuff so it happens something that came up in that conversation that i thought i would briefly talk about which is it's definitely like an idea that i've i've been wrestling with as a artist in uh in the early 90s when i was working at marvel i developed a really kind of clean style and then after the first couple of issues of saint sinner i sort of learned what was too cumbersome and dropped a lot of stuff and, and it, it got quite I, I think i kind of hit a good stride for a pencil and inking process to i can draw a page a day uh sometimes a day and a half for a really dense page but usually a page a day uh went pretty quick thing is that kind of work it's it's very much first blush work you don't have a lot of time to rethink and edit and you're not the writer when you're working at least i wasn't the writer i was working as a, a pencil or an inker but uh, i wasn't taking i was just having to interpret the story um as opposed to conceive it initially uh you still end up doing a lot of like collaboration with writing and that you just you have to visualize the thing but depending on the writer they may have done a lot in the script to describe what they're asking for too i'd gotten very stripped down and clean and it was efficient uh i noticed later on when i got back into drawing comics in the late 90s that it didn't resonate with people as much as sort of messy and so often sometimes very detailed work that i did in my sketchbook i always had an inclination to do kind of more detail which i sometimes mitigate by simply working smaller so that i, I can't go overly detailed i've worked as much as size as or and i've experimented with working smaller than the print size so blowing up the art um not a lot lately and i'd seen other people do that when i was younger and always thought it was a fun thing to do and it, it's it's i goof around with i used to goof around with photocopiers a lot doing that nowadays each you know qualification being each story tends to require its own stylistic notes to be told correctly so the work i do on dream life is different than the work i do on dracula than from the work i do on bastard's tale because I'm trying to hit a particular note or resonance uh, on Bastard Tale, it changes a lot. And some of the work is very sketchy, and some of it's very detailed, and some of it's very loose. Uh, Dream Life had a very particular, very visceral, um, first-person experience richness of reality was what I was going for. And then on Dracula, I want I want to capture the richness of the Byzantine scene. So that one's also pretty tight with details. Uh, and therefore, Penta was a little bit looser, a bit more fun and playful. I would drop out more backgrounds and keep it more character-centric. Um, and I've done stuff where I've experimented with style more drastically, where I've done things that are much more cartoony or abstract um, in form. Uh, my, my influences personally kind of range from like people like Dave McKean and Baron Story and Bill Sinkovich all the way to Alan Davis and um, uh, Duncan Fregato and 
Um, so actually, Jonathan Frears is kind of between the two, isn't he, a little bit? Specifically UK artists, but some American artists too, who were very particularly crisp and clean, uh, that were doing work when I was first learning and developing. I think in the end, in my work now, I'm trying to keep a kind of warm, fuzzy, sketchy looseness or richness of... Uh, some of it is, isn't real detail, it's just texture. It's a density of information. Um, and it's counter to other uh, other trends in comics. Like for example, there's you look at uh, Chris Ware and and and, and Seth, um, who both do very clean and different kinds, but much more cartoon influenced. Uh, so more classic comic art influence. So like they'll use they use much more overt page structure. I like to just lose panel borders and have things merge together when I can. And it's funny because I've heard them talk about how they like the, the regularity of panel borders and the kind of symbolic real or symbolic uh, subtext of the the cartoon characters. And I agree with like a lot of what they say. But when I'm kind of when I'm drawing, it depends on the book again, right? But with Dream Life and with other projects, I kind of have to follow my gut about when it feels done. And like on Dream Life, I was looking for this ability to almost sort of like taste the spaces and the, the nitty-gritty of the surfaces of things. So sometimes I would draw the basic structure a little bit on the cartoony side, and it wasn't super hyper-realistic, but I always wanted to add a lot of surface texture and a lot of grit and then little fine um, anomalous details here and there, because it was very much about how I experience things and I tend to be a little bit hyper-aware. So I was putting in that density of subtext about this isn't just, say, a moment between two people, but the moment of meeting people in a particular place that has a particular feel. And um, I, I dropped a lot of text. There was a lot of scenes where there's no talking. Uh, there are some, definitely some dialogue, more dialogue heavy scenes, but I liked to modulate that. So if you're gonna have so much visual detail, you don't necessarily wanna bombard people with a lot of uh, written text because um, there's a lot of writing in the panel in the form of the art. And then there are other panels where other people talk a lot, and I'll, I'll, those are the times where I'm going to I'm going to drop backgrounds, and I want you to focus on the characters and their conversation, uh, or I just give you periodic rich backgrounds to keep you aware of a context they're in, or if they're discussing that context. There'll be also sequences of where it's all about a banter between two characters, and so you don't I'll, I'll find an excuse to I don't know. There was, there, I wanted to maintain a certain kind of real, sense of reality in a lot of that comic, so I didn't necessarily drop a background entirely. So that it was kind of cartoon graphic uh, very often, but I would do things with lighting to blow out the background and make it simple because uh, you can't really see anything, or just the framing, you know, what I put in there, keep it abstract and simple. So I just came up last night because the people I was talking to were talking about like whether you need to do that and how they felt like they were exploring. Uh, greater simplicity and looser work. And I was actually looking at some of the books that they had published and it was very loose and done very loose and sketchy. Uh, I, the name escapes me just this moment, so I'm not, I'm not gonna try to mention who it was, but local uh, French artist, uh, actually from France, who just moved here and is doing work uh, in Quebec. Um, yeah, I don't think it is like, an, you, it's, it's not an either or thing. I always like to say that one of the things that I love about comics is that they are uh, there's potential for infinite complexity, and as uh, being a detail-oriented person, that appeals to me. I like the density that I can explore, but there's also uh, a train of thought that says you want to um, monitor how intense the work gets, and you don't want to overwhelm the reader and make them kind of tune out. Um, and so that's why I'll do things like I'll, I'll have really rich settings, but then very low text. So it's you're invited to read the page visually. Um, and then when I have richer text, I try to keep the composition simpler. So those are my thoughts on detail versus simplicity and cartooning and comics versus illustrative or more rich detail and texture and all that stuff. And I don't know, it's just sort of like a shorter version, relatively speaking, for a long rambling conversation we had a couple nights ago on New Year's Eve. Happy 2015, everybody. Thanks to my Patreons for your support. And if you're new to this, go check out the patreon.com slash salgood uh, and I think it's just salgood I don't believe I made it more complicated than that yes just salgood patreon.com slash salgood and consider becoming a patron of the arts um, and uh, I'm gonna post a new video soon of work more work on Dracula uh, so yeah
all the best in the new year. Cheers. Mm -hmm.